everyone if you are a returning subscriber welcome back if you are new welcome to my channel my name is dr shingo mufao guys if you haven't subscribed please do so we want to create a community here matrix i haven't forgotten you in today's video i am going to be helping you in terms of how to use the life sciences examination guidelines with regard to paper one the examination guidelines are an essential tool that you need throughout your grade 12 academic journey it is important because it outlines the examiner's expectations and provides descriptions of biological processes which you can write as they are when you are asked to describe these processes. For example, the examination guidelines give descriptions of the processes such as spermatogenesis and oogenesis. My advice is when asked to describe these processes in the exam, write it as it is in the examination guidelines. Sometimes it gives definitions such as homeostasis. My advice is that when studying, learn such definitions from the examination guidelines and write them as they are when you are asked for such definitions in the exam. The first paper one topic in the examination guidelines is the reproduction in vertebrates, those animals with backbones. This topic is worth eight marks out of 150 marks here you are expected to know the two types of fertilization that is external and internal fertilization in terms of what they are that is their definitions examples of animals that go through these types of fertilization as well as advantages and disadvantages you are also expected to know the three types of embryo development which are ovipary ovovivipary and vivipary you need to know them in terms of their definitions or what they are examples of animals that go through those types of development and their advantages and disadvantages the examiner requires you also to know the amniotic egg in terms of its parts and their functions my advice here is learn to draw the egg and label it yourself and also provide functions. You are also required to focus on precocial and outreachal development. Know them in terms of what they are, examples of organisms that go through this type of development and the advantages and disadvantages. Lastly, the importance of parental care needs to be known. This is then followed by the topic human reproduction, which is worth 41 marks out of 150 marks. With human reproduction, the examiner expects you to know the male and female reproductive systems in terms of their structure and functions. My advice, which I normally give my learners, is to draw and label diagrams of both female and male reproductive systems as well as learning the functions of the individual parts. The diagrams you get in the exams may be different from the ones given in your textbooks or study guides. So if you learn to draw your own diagram, you will be interacting with it on a deeper level such that you'll be able to deal with any strange diagram that will be provided in the exam. I advise you to visit your examination guidelines for the exact parts and functions that the examiner expects you to know because some textbooks will provide additional information. You are also required to know the definition of puberty, the hormones responsible for puberty in both males and females, as well as the changes that occur in both. The next concept is gametogenesis. 
The examiner expects you to know that gametogenesis is the formation of gametes by meiosis. This is the definition that is provided in the examination guidelines. So write it as it is when asked for it in the exams. There are two forms in which gametogenesis takes place, which are spermatogenesis in males and oogenesis in females. With spermatogenesis, the examiner expects you to know the definition and the process. Additionally, you need to know how to draw, label, and provide functions of the parts of the sperm cell. For all genesis, the examiner also expects you to know what it is, the process, and also you should be able to draw, label, provide the functions of the parts of the ovum. Then comes the menstrual cycle. For this section, you need to know that the menstrual cycle consists of the ovarian and the uterine cycle. The examiner expects you to know the events taking place in the ovarian and the uterine cycles. In addition, you need to know the hormones that influence the ovarian and the uterine cycles with reference to FSH, LH, estrogen, and progesterone as well as their negative feedback mechanisms in controlling the production of ova. Lastly, fertilization and development of a zygote to a blastocyst. All you need to know here is the definitions of copulation, fertilization, and how the process of fertilization occurs. Also, know the development of the zygote through the embryo to the fetus. In terms of implantation, you are expected to know the definition of implantation, gestation, and pregnancy. You must be able to explain the role of estrogen and progesterone in maintaining pregnancy and the functions of the chorion, chorionic villi, amnion, amniotic cavity, and the amniotic fluid, as well as the umbilical cord and the placenta. The topic human response to the environment follows, which is worth 54 marks out of 150, which is the largest portion of paper one. If you want to ace your life sciences exam, then make sure you understand this topic. Firstly, the examiner expects you to be able to distinguish between the nervous and the endocrine systems. You must be able to explain why humans require the nervous system and that the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord, which are protected by the meninges. You are also expected to know the brain and the spinal cord in terms of structure and function. And my advice as usual, learn to draw and label it yourself. For the peripheral and autonomic nervous system, you need to know the locations and functions. With a simple reflex arc, you are expected to be able to distinguish between the reflex action and the reflex arc. Draw, label, and provide functions of the parts of an example of a simple reflex arc. Also know the functions and significance of the reflex arc and the synapse. The next section is the human eye. The examiner expects you to know the eye in terms of structure and function. My advice as usual, learn to draw and label the eye yourself and provide functions. You need to know what is meant by binocular vision and its importance. You are also expected to know the two processes, accommodation and pupillary mechanisms. Lastly, under the eye, the examiner expects you to know the visual defects such as short-sightedness, long-sightedness, and astigmatism as well as cataracts in terms of what they are and how they are treated. The last section under human response to the environment is the human ear. The examiner expects you to know the ear 
in terms of structure and function. And like the eye, my advice is draw the ear, label it, and provide functions for the parts. The examiner expects you to be able to explain how the ear plays a role in hearing and maintaining balance. Finally, with the hearing defects, you are expected to know the causes and treatments of middle ear infections as well as deafness. The next topic in the examination guidelines for paper one is the endocrine system and homeostasis in humans, which is worth 34 marks out of 150 marks. Firstly, the examiner expects you to know the difference between the endocrine and the exocrine glands. You also need to be able to define the term hormone. With the endocrine system, you are expected to know each gland in terms of location, the hormone it secretes, the function of that hormone, and the target organ of that hormone. When it comes to the endocrine system, I usually ask my learners to draw a table of five columns, headed, gland, location, hormone secreted, function, and target organ. And they use it to summarize what they're required to know in this section. The next section is homeostasis. The first thing here is to know what homeostasis is. My advice is, you learn the definition given in the examination guidelines. You also need to know the factors that must be regulated to maintain a constant internal environment. These factors are carbon dioxide, glucose, salt, water concentration, temperature, and pH. Under homeostasis, we also have negative feedback mechanisms. Firstly, you are expected to know what uh, what negative feedback mechanisms are, then you are expected to know the feedback mechanisms involving thyroxin levels, blood glucose level, blood carbon dioxide levels, water balance, which is also known as osmoregulation, as well as salt levels in the blood. You are expected to know two disorders, which are goiter, and diabetes mellitus. Lastly, under feedback mechanisms, the examiner expects you to know the structure of the skin with particular reference to the parts that are involved in thermoregulation. Here, it's all about structure and function. And like I said before, draw and label the diagram yourself and also provide functions for each of the parts. You are expected to know the role of sweating, vasodilation, and vasoconstriction in the negative feedback mechanisms controlling thermoregulation or regulation of temperature. The last topic in the examination guidelines for paper one is plants' response to the environment, which is worth 13 marks out of 150 marks. Firstly, know what a plant hormone is and the general functions of auxins, gibberellins, and abscisic acid. You also need to know how hormones are used to control weeds. The examiner expects you to know the role of auxins in geotropism and phototropism. There you have it. That's how you use the life sciences examination guidelines to crush your paper one exam. Stay tuned for more content on the individual topics assessed in paper one. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you all in the next video. Bye.